This is Super Yacht News with the Sysman. All right, welcome back to the channel. All right, we have got breaking news uh, tonight. Um, the US Department of the Treasury has added a number of people, uh, some companies, and some actual yachts they've added to the sanctions list. So we're going to go through that list right now. Um, it is quite the list. Um, so we'll get into that right away. Okay, so the new people that have been added, this is the US sanctions list. Um, uh, Alexei Mordashov uh, is the first person. Now, he has already been on the sanctions list since uh, March. His, he was, in, in actual fact, uh, one of his vessels, Motiot Lady M, was one of the first vessels to be arrested when, when all this started. Uh, it was in Imperia in Italy. If you remember, there was two vessels on the same day, Motiot Lady M in Imperia and Motiot Lena in, um, in San Remo in Italy. They were both arrested. Um, the more uh, high profile yacht that he owns, because he owns more than one yacht, he owns uh, another yacht, a 141 meter or um, 464 foot Motiot Nord. Now, if you remember the saga of Motiot Nord, it was in the Seychelles and the vessel left and headed over to Vladivostok in Russia. Um, so he owns that vessel. Now, if there was ever any doubt that Alexei Mordashov owned Motiot Nord, I think this next bit of news will, uh, will uh, eliminate that doubt. Um, also added to the sanctions list is who someone who I believe is his wife, and her name is uh, Marina uh, Alexandra uh, Mordashova. Uh, and she runs a company which has a, an address in London, in fact, uh, called Nord Gold PLC. And it's a, it's a, go, a gold uh, seller, and um, yeah, it's called Nord Gold. So, you know, there, there's a, if there were ever any doubt of the, the, the vessel, Cold Nord, who's the owner, so I think that's eliminated that. The next person on the list is God himself, God Semenovich Nisvanov, uh, and Nisanov, excuse me, uh, a, Russia, a Russian property developer. Um, he, uh, he's been added today. He owns, uh, amongst other things, he owns a, a, um, a, a villa in the south of France in Cap Ferrat, and his vessel, he has a super, super yacht called A Galaxy of Happiness, and that is often seen at anchor off Cap Ferrat, right outside of where his villa is. Now, the next person on the list is uh, not a yacht owner, but he owns a yacht management company. Is Evgeny Cockman, his name is, and he is the founder of Imperial Yachts. Now, you will have, you will remember I've, if you if you're a regular viewer, you'll know I mentioned Imperial Yachts on a few occasions. Uh, I've had uh, various um, read, read out various statements from Imperial Yachts over the last few months as well. They are a yacht management company, and they um, look after most of the Russian uh, super yachts that are out there. They they cater towards uh, the Russian-owned super yachts. Now, what is a yacht management company? Because I, I know a lot of you probably don't know what that is. Um, a yacht management company, they have many tasks. And we're talking uh, from uh, crew recruitment, personnel recruitment, um, arranging flights for crew, uh, crew training, uh, parts procurement, a uh, payroll. So they're also involved in updating of regulations for yachts, how they operate and stuff like that. So there's, a, there's an awful lot on the plate of a yacht management company. Now, one of the obviously one of the things about this company is based in Monaco, but it was founded by a Russian almost entirely they have um, All of the yachts that they manage are Russian owned I believe now I it's very hard for me to confirm that uh, Because they don't actually publish a list of the yachts that they manage It's also something that when I do these videos if I know that they manage a certain yacht I will contact them and ask them for a statement. Now, sometimes I ask them and they tell me they don't manage a yacht like Motiot Crescent and Motiot Charissard. Uh, they were managed by Imperial Yachts during the build phase, but now, according to a spokesperson from Imperial, they don't manage those yachts anymore. But anyway, that's what a yacht management company does. Now, the ramifications for a yacht management company being sanctioned by the US 
is that many of the uh, interactions they have with like I, some of the things I said, parts procurement, uh, maintenance, technical uh, maintenance of the vessel, uh, payroll of the crew and the pay, and pay of bills for um, technicians to fly to the yacht when there's issues and stuff like that. It's all done through the yacht management company. And the owners generally pay the yacht management company, uh, obviously they pay them a fee, but they, pay, they, they use the management company to pay all the bills for that yacht. Now, if the company has been sanctioned, that means that any, uh, any well, this is what I believe it means. I have to tread carefully here. But if, if, a, if a company is sanctioned, that means that anybody who deals with the US or is in the, based in the US or, or does any dealings with the US cannot do dealings with anybody who's on the sanctions list. Now, if, if a yacht management company is on that sanctions list, then surely that means that they can't deal with, the, with those people. So that could have a huge ramifications. If the yacht owner can't pay the management company to pay the crew, then the crew, the, the yacht can't function. So that has a massive uh, potential impact on every yacht that they manage. And uh, I've, 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 I've asked them for a statement. I haven't heard back. I'm sure they're very busy right now because they've just been sanctioned today. Okay, so moving on, um, there are a number of yachts actually added to the sanctions list which i don't believe i've seen before now the first one is is motor yacht flying fox now you'll all know that the motor yacht flying fox was was uh, was arrested in dominican republic it was detained or was detained in dominican republic for a month and uh while well, they the the um, u.s ice were on board going through it along with the obviously the officials from dominican republic and the vessel was eventually allowed to leave and, and it kind of left on a cloud of suspicion because nobody really knew why it left and the and the the dominican government just said, said only that it had left and never gave any reasons for why it had left but it looks like in terms of now that the americans have actually added it to the sanctions list i mean it looks like they, they really missed out on an opportunity to get that vessel because obviously that vessel is now in in turkey right it, we, i i tracked it as it came across the uh came across from across from the caribbean through, across the atlantic through the mediterranean and it's now in turkey with most of the other russian owned super yachts so so uh so motor yacht flying foxes is, is actually on the list and it, and it says here linked to imperial yachts now every person or every everybody or every company that's on this list has a reason it has like a link link to it sort of explaining why it's been added to the list and flying fox is added because of its link to imperial yachts now that i find that a little bit i find that a little bit confusing because they manage many yachts so is that the reason why it's on the on the list or is there another reason i'm not quite sure about that one okay so the next yacht on the list is now you'll remember this one if you've been watching since the beginning motor yacht graceful and Motor Yacht Graceful was believe, is believed to be uh, linked to uh, Vladimir Putin, and it was in refit in Germany just before the, the invasion of Ukraine, and the vessel left abruptly from the shipyard before the, the refit period was completed, and the vessel just left and sailed to Kaliningrad. And, it, and then it turned off its AIS and disappeared. It was one of the first boats to disappear uh, at the beginning of, this, uh, of, of the uh, invasion of Ukraine. So the next boat on the list is Moti Yacht Madame Gu. She's a 99 meter um, uh, fed ship, which has got this uh, blue color on the hull, very distinctive vessel. And she's been hiding out in, uh, in the Dubai for months now. Uh, she turned off her AIS months ago. She's, she's been out at anchor and then coming back into, into the marina there. Now, what I, from what I understand, for over a month now, she's been sat there with a minimum crew on board uh, because of because of the problems they've been facing already um, for um, being able to get things done now because of all these sanctions going on. But Madame Gu has been added, and this and the owner of Madame Gu is Andre Scotch, also a Russian businessman. Uh, the next festival on the list, Motiot Olympia, it flies under a Cayman Islands flag. So does Madame Gu, by the way. Um, and uh, this boat is linked to uh, Vladimir Putin also, according to the US. This is from the paperwork from the US. And the last vessel 
on the list is Motiot Sea Rhapsody. She's a 1500 gross ton vessel uh, with a Marshall Islands flag. And um, this vessel is linked to Andre Koston, who's also, also been added to the sanctions list. So there we go, guys. We have a lot of uh, people, a lot of, there's more people on the list that are being added to the sanctions, obviously, but I've only covered the people who are related to super yachts for obvious reasons. Uh, so you've got all those people added to the list. Uh, you've got this yacht management company, Imperial Yachts, which is, you know, it's just happened today. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens uh, moving, moving forward, because uh, I don't know how that's going to affect exactly. Because also one of the other things is, with, like I said, with Imperial being so secretive, I think only Imperial know exactly how many vessels they manage. But that is going to become more apparent as all of those vessels, I would say, potentially are going to be affected by the sanctions placed on this company. And it will be interesting to see also if if that if the, if the US adding them to the sanctions list will prompt the EU or the UK to do the same. What I'm going to do over the next few days, I'm going to try and break that down and uh, and, and follow the, the news as it as it unfolds. And, and I'll bring that back to you. So please be sure to stay tuned. Uh, if you've got any information about any of the stories we've covered here or any other stories, please be sure to get in touch through the About page on the YouTube channel, or you can go contact me through Facebook Messenger. Don't contact me on Instagram because I'm still having issues with, uh, with Instagram in general. So, uh, but yeah, anyway, thanks very much for watching, guys. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get all the notifications of future videos. All right, guys, catch up with you soon. Bye-bye.